This is a livestock watch list you can build on Google Sheets. I'm gonna show you how to build it step by step, how to customize it, and by the way, there's gonna be a link in the description where you can download it for free. Once you have the spreadsheet ready, you're gonna just be able to change the company ticker and all of the data will automatically update for you. To build the watch list, we're gonna start by entering a column called the ticker column. And this is where we're gonna enter all of the different tickers that we want to keep an eye on. So in this case, we're just gonna start with five tickers, but you can always add more as we go along. Then what we're gonna add is the price. So that corresponds to the stock price. We also want the EPS, and then we want the PE ratio. Now there's different ways of getting the data for these five companies right here. One of the easiest ones and completely free is to use the Google Finance function and this comes built into Google Sheets by default. You don't have to pay anything for it. And if you click here, this will show you how the function works. So in this case, we need to enter a ticker, comma, and then we need to enter an attribute. So in this case, we have the stock price. So we're gonna select this. And what we wanna do is lock this in. You can do this by pressing um, F FN4, and this is gonna put these dollar signs that are gonna lock up the cell. So that way, when we drag this function down, we're gonna get the data for all these different companies right here. I'll explain to you why uh, this company is not working in a second. But as you can see, this is picking the right ticker and it's picking the price for each of these different companies right here. Now the same applies to the EPS. We can do the same thing or we can slightly change the formula so that we could drag it across. I'll just show you how it works on a different line. So we enter Google Finance again, we enter the ticker, we enter EPS, EPS, we could lock it in and then we just need to drag this down so that way we can get this information for all of our different companies right here and then the same applies to the PE ratio so we could copy this and then what we need to do is change this only thing is the PE ratio is not the valid parameter and we don't have the right ticker so here we go now we have this this is not available because this parameter is not valid so to get the PE ratio you just need to type PE into Google Finance and as you'll be able to tell now we get the data so we just need to lock this in again and then what we could do is do this for these companies and we're gonna be able to get the data right away now this is not looking pretty but we're gonna work on the formatting later on now if you want to add companies from international stock exchanges in this case Telus is a Canadian company listed in the Toronto Stock Exchange but this also works for example if you're trying to get companies and the National Stock Exchange of India or pretty much any other company listed around the world. You just need to know how this works. So to get this to work, uh, you need to use the right ticker system. This is the right ticker system for Yahoo, but for the Google Finance function, which we're using right now to get the data, we need to use the Google Finance ticker system. In order to be able to find that, we can just type into Google tell us stock and this is gonna tell us what ticker to use. So in this case is this one right here. TSE and then we have the column so we are going to change the ticker to reflect this and then we just need to make sure to remove any space and as you can see now we get the price for this particular company right now we're gonna get the data for another international stock so for example uh, Tata Steel stock this one is listed in the National Stock Exchange of India this would be the one to go for so we're gonna enter this and we're gonna put it right here make sure to be copy paste properly remove the space and as we can see right here now what we could do is drag this formula this doesn't work still this is because we have an L missing right here so we click this and now we get the data now the problem with using the Google finance function is you can use it for this but what if you want to add revenue what if you want to add dividend yield? There's all these different parameters and data that is very helpful to analyze. And the problem is that Google Finance only has price data. So the only information that you can really get from Google Finance is what you find right here. Open, high, low, market cap, PE. Dividend yield is not available. So this is a little bit of a curveball. 52 week high, 52 week low, etc. And you can even see this in the 
official Google documentation where they list every attribute available for the Google Finance function. So that is one of the problems with this method. This is why what I really recommend that you do is instead use the Y Sheets function and that's what I'm gonna show in this video where you have a lot more flexibility. The data is going to be also uh, less delayed so it's gonna be more real time and you can get information such as revenue, dividend yield, tons and tons of different metrics so that way you can really see all the metrics that really matter for your analysis. Now with that being said here are the parameters that we have on the stock watch list template that we're gonna build together so you just have to make sure to spell these parameters the same way as you see here. If you want to see what parameters are available you can go on this page right here and this is gonna tell you uh, what function you need to use and what parameters are available per each function. The capitalization and the spacing do not matter you just have to spell the parameters in the exact same way and this is helpful because if you want to customize the tracker for you you can just simply change the parameter everything will be updated for you. So we're gonna start with the company's name which I don't believe is a parameter offered on the Google Finance function. Here this is the function to use to get real-time data so in this case we have the name we're gonna enter all these different companies right here. This is the cool thing about this function that you can enter multiple companies as opposed to just a single company and then the parameter or as it was before in the Google Finance, the attribute is name. So we're gonna select this, click enter, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the data except for this two. The reason being is that you need to use the right ticker system. And Y Sheets uses the Yahoo Finance ticker system, so it makes it very simple for you to get this data. So in this case, ticker would be T t.to and then for tata steel this would be tata steel.ns as you can see now all of the information automatically updates the year chart this we're gonna leave to the end because it's a little bit more complicated but let's focus on how we can get this information right here so again we're gonna use the wise price function so we're gonna select these symbols right here and then we're gonna select the parameters and this is the cool thing you can enter multiple parameters at the same time so in this case we're gonna select this and right away the cool thing is that you're gonna get the data very fast and you're gonna get it for all of the different companies that you select if you have more companies you just need to adjust this right so let's say I have another company here all I would do is just add the companies right here that are being added the data and everything else will be automatically taken care of now the target price this is not a piece of data that you would get from any other resources this is after you do your analysis let's say that you figured out that Apple stock price is worth $220 so you would just leave it as this and just enter $220 so that way if the price you know reaches a lower higher price at least you know and you can make that good investment the difference the difference column basically tells you what is the difference between the target price that we set and the current stock price so what we can do is take the current stock price minus the target price and this is gonna give us the difference so in this case we can see this is the difference in the numbers you can also subtract it backwards and take target price minus the current price this is just an example and as you can see because we have an enter target price for all these different companies right here it's just gonna basically tell us the existing stock price you can format the data in any way you want in this case let's just fix this right here so in order to do that we just have to pick a consistent font so in this case what we have is the font Roboto and we have 14 and we also have italics so this is something that we can apply across all of our different data right here so we can just make sure that this is selected make sure that it's 14 make sure that everything is italics and we can also change the alignment of the spreadsheet uh, numbers as well now what you see is that as I scroll to the right to get this data right here something that you see is that this column right here is frozen and this is great because it allows us to see the different metrics for the different companies in order to enable that all you need to do is click view right here and then there's an option that says freeze and then here what you want to do is freeze the first column that way as you move across the spreadsheet you'll be able to see what company you're analyzing and what we're gonna do next is to get the shares outstanding for this what we can do is just select this list of companies or we can also select one company at a time usually it is better to do this right here because you can get the data faster and 
then we're gonna enter the parameters so that's gonna be shares outstanding i'm gonna enter it manually because we don't have it spelled exactly as it should be on j1 so i'm gonna need to enter it manually right here shares outstanding perfect now what we could do is close the bracket and we're gonna get the number of shares outstanding so here we have two options we can divide the number by a million or what we can also do is go right here click on format data and then we can click on number and then you can go to custom formatting and what you want to do is enter this right here that you're seeing this will turn numbers into millions so that way we can see the number in a much more reasonable format and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same thing we're gonna apply it to this right here the market cap uh, in this case it's just picking the wrong cells so we need to change the cells that are being selected and then we don't want the shares outstanding now we want the market cap so for that we are going to enter market cap and this market cap is also going to be in millions because when we copy this we also copy the formatting so that's just a way to simplify what you do with your spreadsheet now we get into these different columns right here so we have year high and year low and then we have percent from 52 week high percent from 52 week low we can get both of these metrics at the same time so we're gonna select this companies right here and then we're gonna select year high and year low and then we're going to click enter and this is gonna give us the data right away now to get the percent from the 50 to week high and the percent from the low what we're gonna do is apply a formula to the data that we got right here one of the simplest ways to calculate this is to click on equals and then selecting the current price and then dividing this number by the year high so we can see the percentage change between these two numbers now there's one more thing that you need to do and that is to use the bracket so that you lock in this calculation first and then you subtract minus one so you get this as a percentage uh, in this case we also get suggested autofill we can click on that or we can just drag this manually ourselves and now we can see that we get the percent from the 52 week high and now we're gonna do the same from the 52 week low so we can just copy paste this formula the problem is that it's not picking the price which is not an issue all we need to do is change this cell right here and now it's gonna be doing that and we can drag this formula down so that way we can see the data more easily to get the volume in shares the formula is very simple again we're going to select equals wise price we're gonna select the list of companies and then what we're gonna do is for the parameter we are going to enter the word volume and that is going to give us the volume in shares for all the different companies that we selected so here it is and then we also want to calculate the dollar volume to calculate the dollar volume we take this times the current stock price and this is gonna give us the volume in dollars in this case it is in millions so we can just double click this right here and this is gonna give us the volume and then here we have two charts that I'm gonna show you how to make step by step to get the year chart we first need to get the historical price data for that I want to show you how it is that you can get this for one company so in this case we have it for Apple and then what we're gonna use is close close is a really good uh, historical data parameter and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this parameter right here that says number of days to end so in this case we can enter 365 and this is gonna give us the last 365 days of like actual trading days so if we close the back the bracket right here you can see that we get the data it is formatted in a little bit of a weird way but you can see the data right here now in order for the spark length to be created we need to make a couple of changes the first change that we need to do is to use the sort function before the wise price function and what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us the oldest data first so that way we can use that in our chart and the chart looks proper so as you can see now we see the oldest data first and then the newest data is gonna be right at the bottom which is perfect and then the other thing is we only 
want to show the close price. We don't want to have the dates. That's not going to be helpful for charts. So for that, we can use this function called index. And this is great because it allows us to get only a particular set of the data. So in this case, row, column, the column is going to be one, two. So the second column. And if we click enter right here, this is going to give us the stock price only for the same time period that we had before. Now that we have the data properly formatted, we can use the sparkline function that comes built into Google Sheets. And we're just going to simply enter the function, close the bracket, and this is going to create the chart for us. Now what we can do is just copy the function, remove it from right here, and then paste it right here. Now we get the chart and the beauty about this is that we can just simply drag it down and this is going to give us the chart for all these different companies that we have. You can also spice up these charts to be a little bit more visually appealing. So for that, you just need to enter the function right here, click comma. And then what you could do is two things. You can type this manually or even better, you can just copy this. I'm going to leave this in the description. And what this is going to do is it's going to change the chart type to be a column and the, the color of the chart to be in blue if you click on this you will see how the data changes which is pretty nice as well but i'm just gonna leave it as it is and then what we're gonna do is copy this function right here and we're gonna apply the exact same concept to the volume so this is gonna give us the volume instead of the close so we need to change that to be volume and then instead of 365 days, we're going to pick the last 90 business days and everything else remains the same. If you want to decorate the chart as well, you can also do that like I showed you before, but you click enter and then automatically the volume sparkling is going to be generated and you can just drag this across to get it for all the different companies. If we go back right here, the last step of the spreadsheet is to select this formatting right here, where if a number is negative, it's going to highlight it in red. And if it's positive, it's going to highlight it in green. In order to do that, what you need to do is select the data that you want this to happen. You can also apply this to the PE ratio or any other metric that you want. And what you're going to do is select this and then go on format and then click on conditional formatting right here. And as you can see, this is going to give you the ability to enter any rules. So let's get rid of the rules that we have right now. And what we're going to do is go right here. And what we're going to say is we don't want any of this formatting. We want this red number. And we're only going to apply it if the number is less than zero. So if it's less than zero, it's going to show up like this. We're going to click on add another rule now. And now we're going to just change this to greater than zero. And and we're going to change this color to now green. You can change it to any color green that you want. And then you click on done. And that's how you're going to format the cells to be able to see information more easily. With that being said, you can add tons of companies. As you can see right here, you can change the information as well. So let's say you want the dividend yield. You just need to figure it out what function to use. Enter the function, drag it across or get it for all the different companies at once. And you can build some truly powerful stock watch list on Google Sheets that you can use to make some great investment decisions. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.